Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Sean McMahon, and I have the honor of being your CVU principal. I'd like to welcome everyone today to Champlain Valley Union High School's 45th Commencement Exercises for the Class of 2009. If the assembly could please stay standing at this time for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by John Mack, followed by the National Anthem, sung by Ali Barnes and Hillary Whitney. Please face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. The welcome will be delivered on behalf of the senior class by Jahela Dudley. Faculty member TJ Mead told me to keep this speech short, funny, and good looking, like him. I'm telling you that my speech will do just this and be one that you will remember for the rest of your life. This is a challenging task, to keep it short, that is. I mean, I could talk to you guys forever. I really could. Standing in the card aisle, I acquired some inspiration for this day upon us. Yes, the card aisle of Hannaford's. That's where I shop. You may see me there, shopping for groceries. I found these words of wisdom from the professionals. Embrace the world with your talents and your dreams. Today is for celebrating all you have accomplished in a future filled with endless possibilities. Inspirational. I will add this. I was skateboarding through the hallways a couple of weeks ago. Don't worry, it was after school hours. I was thinking about the future. We have been walking through these halls for four years now. And now, it's all about to change. After you depart here this afternoon, everything will be different. Today is a celebration. Everything positive. No tears, 
unless they reverberate sounds of joy. Today, we celebrate not nearly four years, but 13 years of hard work. With us, we have here family, hi family, friends, grandparents, relatives, grandparents, alumni, academic adjudicators, and of course, each other. As seniors, we are now asked to dive into the next year of our lives, unknowing of the path to come. Every day we moved to the sound of the bell, and now we are asked to choose a course by ourselves for ourselves. Graduate, whatever you're dreaming, planning, hoping, or wanting, that's what this wishes you. Mm. Naturally, we all have our different paths. Some of us will get jobs, join the military, go to college. Some will become beekeepers, zombie slayers, and others will travel or volunteer. Certainly, this is change, the ambiguity of what is to come next. And although change may be, may be scary and uncomfortable at times, I'm here to reassure you that change is a good thing. Change is an ingredient in the dish of life, and change will define who you are in the future. I will, this, I will say this, class of 2009, be open to new experience, new faces, new places, and new learning. Inspire to find inspiration in this world and in others. This is a birth of a new era. The softest little cuddles and the sweetest dreams come true. The warmest hugs and love to share your baby boy and wrong card. <laughs> new dreams, new plans, and a wonderful new life ahead. May they all come true for you. I'm also aware of the importance of the bonds we have made through the past couple of years. So I did want to leave you with some final words. And although I learned this in Girl Scouts 10 years ago, I believe this pertains to everyone in the land. Make new friends and keep the old. One is silver and the other is gold. A circle is round. It has no ends. That's how long I will be your friend. Class of 2009, welcome to graduation. First address, the first address on behalf of the senior class will be delivered by Tim Reichert. Congratulations to the CVU graduating class of 2009. Thank you to the families, friends, teachers, and classmates of each graduate. Your dedication and commitment is truly felt by your presence here today, and I am honored to speak on behalf of such an outstanding class. I speak in front of you today with the great respect and excitement on such an important day. A day of reflection, a day of celebration, and a day of application. With the speed at which the world runs today, there's no surprise that our own culture has developed a results-oriented mindset, whether it be iPods, cell phones, and even Facebook pages have progressed so rapidly that we often overlook the importance of a simple how or why. So with today's ceremony, I challenge my peers to reflect on their own scholastic journey and the path of which we meet here today. So class of 2009, remember. Remember first block geometry class, teaching us how to break down insurmountable problems into smaller parts. Remember chemistry class, proving how curiosity and knowledge are no trivial matters. Remember the preparation of cross-core debates, emphasizing the importance of communication in an ever-global environment. And finally, remember the wonderful pieces of art around our hallways, because there's always room for more creativity in our world. Now, each of these memories not only play an important role in shaping who we are as individuals, but also pays a tribute to the great faculty and staff we have here at CVU. For as with your help, that we reflect on the challenges we've faced and we prepare to face in the future. However, today is also a day of celebration. Together, we celebrate the academic awards, performances, and state championships of all graduates. Together, we celebrate the rallies, the, uh, the rallies and 
the coffee houses and town meetings, and yes, even throwing dodgeballs at each other. Together, we celebrate Spirit Week, Rocking the Red Fridays, and even uh, all of dressing up in togas with each other and laughing about it with Twin Day. Um, each, of the, each of the individual before me has provided a small portion of his or her talents, creating a graduating class absolutely worthy of applause. The skills brought through the halls of CVU create a unique community of students who inspire others on a daily basis. And as we reflect on and celebrate this day, we must also apply what we have learned to the future. No matter what lies ahead, it is important to use the core CVU values as a backdrop to the future. So whether you are using your freshman year model UN skills in a real United Nations resolution debate, or maybe just waiting for the third time in one day in line at Paisley Hippo, CVU will and should continue to be a driving force in how you represent yourself. A few years back, when I was an underclassman, and certainly not thinking of graduation, I stumbled across a simple but powerful saying which read, opportunity and optimism go hand in hand. Now, at first you may think that that's a quote that's simply glanced over and simply forgotten by the time you turn the next page. However, in walking up to the podium today, I've begun to realize its true significance. I have spent four valuable years with this class of 2009, and I've seen my friends inviting opportunities into their own lives with enthusiasm, excitement, and joy. As members of this class, we are not afraid to take risks because it is through risk taking which opens up new doors. Aside from standard facts and graduation requirements, CVU has taught us to take on our own initiatives and to do so with intensity and pride. So, class of 2009, as you reflect on, celebrate, and apply this very important day in your lives, I ask you to remember. Remember to never stop learning, never stop taking risks, and to always do so with a smile on your face. Thank you and congratulations once again to the CVU class of 2009. The second address on behalf of the senior class will be delivered by Hilary Benoit. As a child, we all think our lives will turn out just as we imagine. We set goals for ourselves. I'll graduate, go to college, I'll be a doctor, a lawyer, a firefighter. At five years old, we imagine that as adults, we'll have children, we'll buy a home. Maybe we'll have a dog or a cat, we'll get married. What consumes our thoughts the most at this point in our lives is why cookies aren't an acceptable breakfast food. And if money doesn't grow on trees, then where does it come from? We never imagine that we'll face struggles that will turn us into someone else. We never imagine that by the end of our high school journey, we'll look back and wonder what the hell happened. As we all know now, the majority of our lives don't turn out exactly as we imagined they would. For me, that fantasy was still intact until freshman year. Then a hard, unexpected dose of reality hit me. High school wasn't what I had hoped it would be. I wasn't able to sail through it without doing work. It wasn't a blast, and it wasn't fun. I found myself falling behind and feeling trapped. I didn't want to go to school. I didn't know people, and I didn't make friends. I dragged myself through freshman year with frequent absences and multiple failing grades. The summer before sophomore year, I was absolutely committed to going back and being an entirely different student. I wanted to do well. I wanted to graduate on time. But unfortunately, on the first day of school, I was dragged into an office for a meeting. Immediately upon walking into the school, it felt as though people thought I would fail. There wasn't the idea that I'd try harder sophomore year. There was no second chance. I had wanted to enter my second year of high school with a whole different attitude, a whole different outlook. But within the first hour of me being back, that whole mentality was gone. I didn't feel like the school had an ounce of faith in me anymore. I remember being constantly nagged by multiple teachers and counselors. They were always trying to pick me apart to see what was wrong with me. Why was I resisting what they thought was help? I remember being analyzed all of sophomore year. I'd skip school and not show up for a week. When I did go to class, I was pulled out and asked why I hadn't been in previous classes. I wanted people to leave me alone, to stop thinking they knew what was going on in my head, and to stop trying to fix me. Nobody thought I was going to graduate. I was told to just drop out, that I'd never do it. I think maybe that's where the trouble began. I figured that if hardly anybody believed in me, I shouldn't believe in myself. If everyone else thought I'd fail, why not do it? What's the point in pushing yourself to the finish line when nobody in the bleachers is cheering you on, if in fact, they're booing you? It was sophomore year that I was first approached about the life program. It was sophomore year that I was dead set on avoiding that program at all costs. 
I applied to the program, though. It was not at all what I wanted to do. I didn't want to be a part of it. But the summer before junior year, I knew that was my only option. I switched my mentality around entirely. Instead of wondering why I'd want to push myself when nobody believed in me, I realized that was the opposite of what I wanted to do. What I really wanted to do was to succeed, to graduate on time, and to prove everybody that had ever doubted me wrong. I wanted to make everybody that had ever made me feel inferior, inept, and unintelligent eat their words. I wanted to be proud of myself, to make my parents proud. I wanted to say, you know what, I have struggled. This was hard, but I did it. I wanted to be worth something. So I went. I enrolled in the LIFE program and I committed myself. At that point, it was my only hope to graduate. That was my goal, to be within the space just like the rest of you, wearing my cap and gown and moving on with LIFE. Not being held back, not graduating over the summer, but walking with my class in 2009. So for junior and senior year, I tried my best. I did everything I could. I held a part-time job for two years. I took three college classes at the Community College of Vermont. I went to the LIFE program and I did my work. When graduation challenge rolled around, I did that. Despite my struggles, I learned to play the guitar. I presented my learning experience. I grew. I grew as a student, as a human being, and I'm standing here doing exactly what I wanted to do for four years. I don't know what other people are thinking. I don't know what the people that had no faith in me are feeling. I don't know if they care. But I know that the people that matter care. I know that I did what I could to get here, and I know that I didn't give up. I felt like the school system wanted to be able to force me to be like other students. I didn't fit the traditional role that CVU offered me as a freshman and sophomore, but they wanted me to. On one hand, I'm angry about what it took for me to get here, but on the other hand, I'm glad that my struggles with school have been a learning experience for me. Not only did I take away the academic aspects of high school, but I took away an experience that changed me as a person. I learned that giving up on your goals really won't get you there, that even if you feel like nobody believes in you, prove them wrong. People doubted that I'd be standing here today, that I'd make it this far, but I am. I have plans to go to college and I'm starting a new chapter in my life. This is done with and I couldn't be more excited to start something new. The whole graduation experience is bittersweet, but in the sense that if you let it sit on your tongue just long enough, you realize it's a little sweeter than you had initially thought. The point of the speech wasn't to be bitter or angry or to wallow in my own mistakes. It was to say this. You never really know how much you as a person are capable of until you do it. Doubting yourself gets you nowhere. Committing yourself to what you want to do and forgetting what other people think is what will get you somewhere. No, we don't always turn out the way that we imagined ourselves to, the way our parents or friends or teachers thought we would. But just because we aren't who we thought we would be doesn't make us a bad person. It makes us a changed person, a person who has experienced growth and has gotten to know themselves better than they ever thought possible. I thank my family for being the ones to believe in me this entire time, for not giving up and supporting me regardless of the decisions I made. I thank the few teachers that were willing to work with me, to focus on my strengths and talents rather than my past. Words can't really describe what I want to say to these people for being there when nobody else was, but I'm grateful for it. Maybe in the end, our mistakes don't really matter. What matters is not necessarily that we experienced struggles, but that we overcame them, that we learned from ourselves, and that we're going somewhere. Stay true to who you are, and don't let other people stand in your way. And every single one of you will be successful in this journey that we're all about to embark upon. Congratulations, class of 2009. We did it. The third address on behalf of the senior class will be delivered by Sarah Castle. Alice Hazen's hat fell off last year, so I don't want that to happen. I spent a lot of time on this. Um, but you'll have to forgive me, because um, I don't really know where to start or even what to say with the intimate rhythms of my voice, but you don't really have a choice because you all just have to sit there in those chairs and listen while I dictate. No, while I reiterate. And I'm terrified, standing up here, quaking in my shoes, trying to find the words, the words that I choose to revisit the years, to wind back the gears. Oh, we're all sweating in our plastic bags. Are they on right side out, or can you see the tags? Our hearts are racing with the anticipation of writing a college dissertation, but let's try to focus on this revisitation of freeze frame flashbacks these four years. Four years. And in a few more minutes, we'll have hit it and quit it. We were in it 
to win it, and it's won. So frame that calligraphy script. It's a medal. And don't backpedal. There's no stopping now. Please don't ask us how. We're just barreling down the swirly slide head first. Heart open, lips broken, chapped and raw from screaming with joy. Caught up in the life ride, the rip tide. We'll settle into our own stride. We're kicking off the training wheels. We're going to cook our own meals. Gonna eat ramen noodles every night for dinner, every day for lunch, and for breakfast. Remember freshman orientation? Did anyone talk to someone that they didn't know from middle school? Were we all too preoccupied with being cool, interesting, mysterious? We shared that experience and many more. And today, before we walk through that door, Graduating class of 2009, pause for a second, just one last time. Take a breath and shut your eyes, because the chlorine in the pool of life dyes your hair green if you're not careful. So with wacky hair and tacky robes, we'll trip down that hallway towards who knows. And at the edge of the pool, we will test the heat. And feeling brave and invincible, we will lift off our feet. We will rise up. Step into our own space. Look life in the face and say, hey, I graduated with the CVU class of 2009. Do you know what that means? It means first in flight, Red Hawk through and through. It means I don't do valedictorian. It means two sections of AP French and a student-directed spring musical. It means that garden will be beautiful. It means a black U.S. president and a female class president. We tangoed at the trike race, and I can bravely face whatever life throws my way. Because Mark Pogat taught me the difference between a rectangle and a square. So don't think you can stand there and hand back my application. I will get a job. I will travel the world. My voice will be heard. So listen. As I speak on behalf of my classmates, as the last of the presenters, thank you, mom, dad, teachers, and mentors. Thank you for stopping me when my shirt was on inside out. But this is what I'm talking about. We get it now. We've got it now. We are graduating now. A gift from the departing senior class will be presented by Holly Bachelis and Samantha Fontaine. Class of 2009, answer me this. When you walked through the halls of CVU on a daily basis, did you see piles of gum wrappers, paper, empty drink bottles, or trash? We, along with our peers and the staff members of CVU, are extremely lucky to have been able to learn and work in such a spotless environment. On behalf of the class of 2009, in the heart of this past winter, we presented the maintenance staff with a brand new industrial strength coffee maker and thanks for all of the hard work that they demonstrate day in and day out. Through rain, shine, sleet, snow, and even mud, our custodians have been there to clean up our messes, whether they be intentional or not. This part of our class gift was a token of our immense appreciation. We wanted the second part of our gift to be something that the school really needed. Our beloved yet inadequate auditorium has served CVU students and community members since its construction in 1964. Over the years, the auditorium has hosted such events as band concerts, one acts, spring plays, talent shows, and of course, the fall musical. But there are a few features that make our, our, our auditorium truly unique. A very cool but 
horrendously impractical orchestra loft, lights that spontaneously turn off, a sound system that buzzes when the lights are dimmed, and a stage that, like the Grinch's heart, is two sizes too small. <laughs> so as part of our gift, the senior class has decided to donate $5,000 to the auditorium renovation project in hopes that future, future Red Hawks will be able to use this space to fulfill their highest potential. Also, um, because we won't be there to see the, the completed auditorium, senior Tommy Powers has crafted a beautiful sign that says CVU Red Hawks to hang above the auditorium and signify our gift. <laughs> Throughout our four years at CVU, we have received much from the school, and now it is our turn to give back. Be proud of your legacy, class of 2009. The honored speaker invited by the class of 2009 to address them on this occasion will be introduced by Maya Jared. In a recent episode of Man vs. Wild, hosted by Bear Grylls, a Steve Irwin, may he rest in peace, type of adventurer, Mr. Grill showed off his survival skills in remotest Patagonia. The harsh climate on the massive plateau in South America is a mix, of, a mix of glacial and desert landscapes. Not much can survive here. But Bear Grylls has nothing on today's speaker, our own Mr. Bill Mares. Mr. Mares has also braved the harsh climate and survived, or rather thrived, teaching English and beekeeping in a school in New Queen, a place Mr. Mares fondly refers to as East of Nowhere. Our traveler and author was also in Mexico this February and Macedonia in March, where he spent his time spreading the knowledge of how to cultivate the golden nectar that bees magically produce. Doesn't retirement sound nice? Mr. Mayers has not slowed down in the least since his retirement as a teacher from CVU just a few years ago. While he was spreading his knowledge among students here instead of in Mexico or Patagonia, he made quite an impact on the school. The seniors sitting here today never had the chance to be in a class with him, so they may not understand what he did for us. Mr. Mayers co-created the American foreign policy class that is so popular today and was named Teacher of the Year in 1998 as well as holding a collection of books in the school library. But these are just a few of his many legacies. While the recognition of being a fantastic teacher is nice, this is not what Mr. Mayer strived for in his classroom. He wanted curiosity to flourish in his students, something that is given, that's put on the back burner today with SAT scores and tests. He wanted them to think as his license plate reads. And while he admits that it sounds cliche, he feels lucky to have been encouraged to be curious, and he wants to pass it forward. So to honor Mr. Bill Maris before he takes the floor, let us use his own four-step process for peaking curiosity on him. <laughs> Question number one. What is this made of? Question number two. What is it? Question number three. What was in the artist's mind when it created this? And hold your judgments for question number four till after he speaks. But the fourth question is, do you like it? Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Bill Mares. Thank you, Maya, for that very kind introduction. Class of 2009, thank you for inviting me this afternoon when you have other things on your mind. Thanks to your parents for having you. And thanks to my former colleagues who inspired me to be a better teacher.
Now, a lot of graduation speeches are about your new dawn, your bright and shining commencement, how you're going to succeed, how you will have the world by the tail. But they are tiresome cliches and often untrue. I want to take a few minutes to talk about failure. My interest here is not in deliberate or reckless failure, but in that which comes often despite your hardest efforts and your most fervent desires. Because I believe that disappointments will as often be your traveling companions on the journey of life as will success. Failure is hard to analyze because as individuals and institutions, we never like to admit our failings or really to examine our defeats. Now, of the definitions of failure in the Oxford Universal Dictionary, my favorite is to become exhausted, to give way under trial, to fall short in performance or attainment. One obvious kind of failure is you flunked an exam. That's straightforward and unhappy. You didn't study. The questions were too hard. You didn't. Or you, maybe you had a bad day. And then there are the athletic losses. Most of my varsity teams in high school had losing seasons. And we grew tired of being told that we were building character. <laughs> a second kind of failure is the inability, inability to measure up to or to achieve one's own aspirations. By that definition, I stand before you a three-time failure. In the years after I graduated from high school, I tried to become first a foreign service officer, and then a banker, and then a lawyer. In the first case, the State Department rejected me. In the second case, I rejected banking. And the third case was a draw. I didn't like law school, and law school didn't like me very much either. I can jo joke about it now, but at the time, it was devastating as those failures mounted up. And then, as if to prove the old adage that a blind hog can find an acorn now and then, I fell into journalism and writing, and then politics and teaching. But it was all no thanks to planning on my part. The third brand of failure is based upon the belief that once you have chosen a course, a job, a profession, or even an opinion, you should stick with it come hell or high water. The New York Times recently ran a long piece about a lawyer who threw over a six-figure income to repair motorcycles because he wanted concrete fulfillment with both his hands and his mind. A fourth version of failure is caused by for forces beyond our individual control. The dairy farmer in Vermont, a fisherman in Massachusetts, an auto worker in Detroit whose jobs have disappeared. Look at the economy. With almost 10% of the people out of work, millions of people who did what conventional wisdom, morality, and economics told them, and now they're out paving, pounding the pavement looking for a job. You are going into a world that is changing by the minute, where events from far away from your doorstep will affect you. It's like one of those space shuttle simulators, spinning, shaking, rattling, in perpetual hair-raising motion, a world moving even as you walk upon it. And anyone who promises you that you will be the masters of your destiny is either smoking or snorting something. <laughs> so what does this mean? First of all, don't be afraid to fail. In his book, Life on the Mississippi, Mark Twain described a boat pilot who applied for a job. He said he deserved the post because he knew where all the sandbars were. The captain asked how. His eye hit him, he replied, and he got the job. Second, think for yourself. <laughs> Be contrary. As the bumper sticker says, question authority. Be suspicious of easy answers and slick promises. Hang out with people who are smarter than you are. Yes, reach for the stars with one hand, 
but keep the other hand free to help the less fortunate. I predict that all of you will fail in at least one of the ways I've described, and I dare say you will be better for it. That is what Thomas Huxley meant when he wrote, there is the greatest practical benefit in making a few mistakes early in life. To John Carroll, a newspaper columnist in San Francisco, success is boring. Success is proving you can do something that you already know how you can do, or doing something correctly the first time. First time success is usually a fluke. First time failure, by contrast, is expected. It's the natural order of things. We all think of Thomas Edison as a genius who never made a mistake. But he estimated that he tried over 700 substances and combinations of substances to get the right material for a light bulb. His reflection was not, I have failed 700 times, but rather, I have succeeded in proving that those 700 ways don't work. <laughs> From 150 years ago, Henry David Thoreau said words that still resonate, cultivate the tree that you have found to bear fruit in your soil, regard not your past failures nor successes, all the past is equally a failure and a success, it is a success in as much as it offers you this present opportunity. One of my sons uh, works and lives in Thailand and when I told him that I was going to deliver this talk on this subject, he wrote back, said, just don't be boring, Dad. <laughs> and then to his email, he attached a YouTube clip of an ad that Michael Jordan did for a small, struggling shoe company. Jordan arrives at the player's entrance to the Chicago Stadium, and as he walks to slowly toward the entrance, out of the darkness, you can hear him say, I have missed oh, more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the winning shot and missed. I have failed over and over and over again in my life, and that's why I succeed. Thanks again for having me, and good failure. At this time, I'd like to recognize the entire faculty and staff of CVU and all our CSS schools who have played significant roles in supporting the class of 2009. <laughs> of special note this afternoon is that we have three teachers leaving us with over 100 plus years of service to CVU. Pam Lord, Sandy Lord, and David Ely. At this time, I'd like to introduce the folks on the stage. Elaine Pinckney, superintendent of CSSU Schools, and the members of the, the Board of School Directors, David Rath from Williston, Rebecca Moore of Shelburne, Jeff Parker of Shelburne, Mike Bissonette of Hinesburg, Leah Crivetti Chang of Hinesburg, Jonathan Milne of Williston, Meg Hart Smith of Williston, Jean Jensen of Williston, and Dottie Waller of Charlotte. In addition, I'd like to recognize two other people on the stage who have contributed mightily to the class of 2009. Their class advisor, Michelle Fonjami Urkel, and CVU Student Services Director, Patty Tomashot. <laughs> the 
Ms. Jean Jensen, Chairwoman of the Board of Directors, these students have satisfactorily completed the pre prescribed course of study according to the requirements of the State of Vermont and the Board of School Directors of Champlain Valley Union High School. Therefore, I recommend that they be recognized as graduates of this high school, the class of 2009. Thank you. By virtue of the power invested by this high school and as chairwoman of its board of directors, I accept your recommendation. I would ask that the first group of students please begin to approach the stage. Okay, here we go. Katherine Aiken. Samantha R. Anksman. Nikolai M. Anthony. Nicholas A. Arms. Holly E. Bachelis. Jared B. Badger. Casey A. Baker, Allison Barnes, Lucy B. Barrett, Kate, Caitlin R. Bashaw, Samantha L. Beatty, Chelsea J. Bolio, Elizabeth J. Beckett, Richard A. Bellick, Lucy Beliveau, Hillary M. Benoit, Anne N. Bertolette, Brittany L. Blair, Amanda R. Blanchard, Andrea N. Blood, Sarah E. Boland, Benjamin R. Bond, Michael A. Bonfigli, Nicole M. Bono, Kelsey A. Bostock, Kylie C. Bordeaux, Christopher P. Booten, Cameron H. Breck, Christopher M. Bunbury, April C. Burbank, Benjamin A. Bernar, Cameron J. Bernar, Ashley M. Butkus, Josh D. Cameron, Kelly M. Carpenter, Nicholas G. Carrero, Taylor J. Carroll, Christopher A. Carter, Sean P. Carter, Shane Cartelero, Eric Champney, Robert L. Charland, Kanata A. Chaudhry, Tegan L. Chala, Eric Chen, Scott J. Trehoniak, Ryan Schwanier, Madeline R. Christian, Jason R. Claremont, Miranda E. Clark, Jennifer A. Kloss, 
Mandy K. Clayton. Christopher N. Colburn. Stephanie L. Como. Celeste Consiglio. Emily A. Cook. Thaddeus Cook. Evan D. Coop, Cope. Lindsay H. Cope. Michaela R. Cornbrooks. Taryn L. Causey. Eric V. Krockenberg. Claris W. Cutler. Sam Darling. Timothy R. Davis. Brady D. DeHayes. Ami S. DePrince. Lindsay E. DeSimone. Tyler M. Devitt. Murray G. Delaney. Jacqueline L. Demers. Oliver L. Demick. Zephaniah D. DeSormo. Mara L. Disler. John P. Dixon. Rebecca L. Donaldson. John W. Donnelly, Jr. Carolyn B. Dubay. Jahela Dudley. Travis J. Dufresne. Jordan M. Duke. Jeffrey A. Dumas. Joshua A. Duncan. Stephanie J. Duval. Alicia M. Dykema. Thomas D. Eddy. Caitlin M. Emerson. Rebecca L. Faga. Colleen L. Fairchild. Emily A. Ferrone. Catherine L. Farley. Virginia H. Farley. Dylan J. Faith. Johanna P. Fay. Brittany P. Ferdinand. Samantha R. Fontaine. Stephen R. Fortin. Timothy P. Fournier. Ryan T. Fox. Danica G. Frisbee. Colin S. Frost. Kelsey E. Gagnon. Rose E. Gallagher. Harrison C. Gatos. Matthew D. Galt. Jacob R. Javalt. Christopher J. Ghazi. Quinlan A. Gilbert. Aaron E. Jingris. Dana L. Gerard. Sophia L. Glazer. Kyle L. Goodrich. Alexander R. Goulet. Benjamin T. Grasso. Charity M. Griffiths. Joshua D. Gerwitz. Kelsey S. Hall. Christopher R. Hall. Henry B. Haller. Brandon E. Hammond. Tyler Hawkins. Molly E. Hebert. Alex M. Hennessy. Melissa M. Henson. Jordan R. Haywood. David G. Hildebrand. Samuel J. Hill. Shelley Ho. 
Jonathan A. Hoadley. Alexander P. Hogan. Patrick J. Hollick. Emma J. Hopper. Christopher W. Howard. Madeline E. Howe. Dylan P. Hudson. Sam M. Hughes. Tyler A. Hulbert. Katie M. Iadanza. Dragon Jagger. Amber L. Jaro. Maya I. T. Jared. Ariel L. Jarvis. Justin Hans Jenny. Jack Jessett. Kyle B. Justice. Amanda E. Kaminsky. Bethany J. Carstens. Sarah S. Castle. Kelly M. Keen. Aaron L. Keller. Teresa C. Keller. Eric D. Kalibas. Kaylin A. Kareva. Tasha S. Kramer Melnick. Stephen M. Kraus. Courtney LaBombard. Ashlyn E. LaCroix. Nicholas B. LaFrance. Justin B. LaPointe. Jared R. Lake. Rennick W. LaLancet. Daniel A. Lambert. Ian D. Lampman. Caitlin C. Landry. Kyle B. LaRock. William R. Leonard. Joseph J. Letourneau. Andrew D. Lieberman. Ethan Link. Emily P. Loisel. Catherine E. Longshore. Carl F. Lozon V. Andrew F. Lugano. Elliot J. Lutton. Michael T. Lyman. Kara A. Lynch. Megan K. Lynn. Amara D. McKillop. John V. Mack. Tegan M. Mahoney. Matthew D. Mayner. Ryan P. Millette. Danielle E. Mallow. Jason T. Marco. Christine P. Martell. Allison T. Maines. Elena L. McCormick. Tyler L. McDonald. Braden C. McKenna. Megan R. McLaughlin. Anders Maline. Molly Rose K. Mendel. Jeffrey M. Mercia. Elizabeth A. Merritt. Matthew Metz. Danielle M. Michael. Ethan D. Mick. Katie G. Milne. Cora M. Manette. Shane M. Montani. Nicholas D. Moore. John C. Moses. 
Tanner J. Munson. Joseph M. Myers. Elena R. Nardozzi. Angela M. Navin. Siobhan Neela Stock. Peter J. New. Jeffrey M. Nevius. Island H. Wien. Jenny B. Nolan. Juliana O'Brien. Megan E. O'Brien. T. Wesley O'Brien. Zachary D. Offer. Kalinda J. Pakulski. Marissa S. Parente. Rebecca M. Paskett. Brendan J. Pelletier. Robert M. Pelletier. Haley E. Perkins. Eva V. Petro. Jennifer L. Petinelli. Matthew S. Phelps. Victoria A. Phillips. Ashley A. Pickering. Rory M. Pierce. Christine T. Piper. Matthew C. Poyer. Ryan M. Poyer. Michael J. Porzuzek. Thomas F. Powers. Justin E. Precourt. Megan A. Precourt. Dylan Preston. Dean E. Priest. Andrew J. Proft. Aaron R. Prom. Amira Pualwan. Luke E. Reed. Jory A. Reeves. Ariana D. Rahak. Timothy J. Reichert. Samuel C. Resnick. Molly C. Rhodes. Christy Lee Roberts. Matika Y. Robinson. Tara A. Robinet. Harrison E. Rose. Matthew A. Ruel. Jordan Y. Rule. Rebecca A. Russ. Amanda C. Russell. Catherine Russell. Annalise C. Sanders. Jonathan Schechner. Lauren A. Schottiger. Cyrus K. Schenk. Samuel H. Schneider. Maria E. Sengel. Sean E. Sr. Georgia T. Shaw. Alexander H. Shea. Joseph M. Shook. Samuel E. Shook. Joanna I. Sienko. Ryan K. Simmons. Timothy S. Simmons. Catherine T. Smith. Owen B. Smith. Nicholas J. Snow VI. 
John A. Sosinski. Benjamin D. Soule. Samuel A. Spencer. Lowell T. Spillane. Natasha N. Sprano. Chastity R. Squires. Megan S. Squires. Bryn E. Stroop. Jessica L. Sturdevant. Anthony Silva. Matt Silva. Joshua D. Sunby. Devin P. Swazi Rerick. Ali D. Sweeney. Brittany S. Tenney. Elizabeth A. Tabalt. Jake Tebow. Jacob S. Tischler. Michael C. Toof. Max W. Valentine. Mark J. Vecchio. Mari Vesterstein. Philip Vilmer. Natasha N. Sprano. Remy Vogler. Jackson B. Waller. Kayla R. Walters. Ashley M. Ward Russon. Marcy J. Webster. Patrick Welch. Zachary Wells. Julia W. Whitaker. Todd E. Whitaker. Caitlin E. White. Sarah K. Whiteside. Hillary J. Whitney. Karina A. Whitney. Aaron L. Wiley. Timothy J. Williams. Kelly A. Willis. Matthew E. Winter. Shirley Vole. Diana M. Wolfish. Sherman R. Wood. David D. Yandel. Michael J. Yergo. And Eric D. Ziegelman. Be seated, please.
Some of you may have figured out already that our concluding farewell of the class of 2009 will be delivered by Benjamin Bond and Jacob Tischler. Testing. Oh, I can hear myself. <laughs> OK, so sometimes at graduation, people will strip as a stunt. <laughs> Don't worry, we have clothes on underneath. Jacob Tischler, we have finally made it. Ben Bond, after four years of hard work, we have finally, finally graduated. graduated. In those four years, we've all felt, as Jacob does now, flat on our backs, overwhelmed by tests, projects, and so much more. It reminds me of a story. At Seaview at a glance, the night where parents could go to their children's classes, my dad went to my AP English class. Mrs. Gale <laughs> was, was using a projector. And while she was talking, a fly was attracted to it. When she turned around, there was a cloud of smoke. The fly had been vaporized. Now, it doesn't take a literary whiz to know that this was foreshadowing. The projector symbolized senior year. The fly, class of 2009, was us. <laughs> we did not get vaporized. <laughs> <laughs> We did come close, <laughs> but because of all of our hard work, we have learned many valuable life lessons. We have learned to juggle our work. We have made friendships. And all because we worked so hard until we could no longer stand. Now, class of 2009, we are stronger. And we've learned all the skills we need to take on even bigger projectors. College, jobs, whatever we want. We are ready. After all that, class of 2009, we can finally say that we, we truly deserve, deserve to graduate. graduate.